I just want to talk about something briefly. And that is about believing things. Just about believing things. Why do we believe the things we believe? I think that there have probably been a lot of books out there written about that. You know, why do we believe the things we believe? I don't really know if I can answer that. I don't have answers for that. And I don't think anybody else does either. I don't know why we believe a lot of things. But I do know one thing. That the way in which we talk about things, just our everyday speech, figures of speech that we use, have a big impact on our belief system. Our belief system is sort of shaped by a lot of things like that. How we say things. You know, and it, it's just like if you keep telling someone that they're stupid all the time. Or not even just tell them, but you kind of demonstrate that in many different ways. Especially kids, young kids. They begin to just simply absorb that stuff. They internalize it. And they take it as true. And they believe it. So it becomes believable to them. If somebody says, you know, you're really stupid and you'll never do anything. You'll never accomplish anything. They accept that as true. If somebody says, you can do great things, you can accomplish at a great level. They doubt it. They become skeptical. And I think that's the case about, you know, doubting things and and believing things. It all has to do with mental conditioning. When things are repeated to you over and over and over and over. You know, advertisers, as I've said before many times, they know to use this technique of repeating things. If you associate one product with some other reality that is totally unrelated, as if one thing caused another, your mind sort of jumps that gap. You start making those connections. This actually is in harmony with all the things David Hume said about the laws of association. He was the one who first came up with this notion of law of association in the mind. How we associate things because things are presented to us. You know, if, you know, success and having a lot of material things are always presented to you. Side by side, you associate, you connect them. Successful people have lots and lots of material things. Successful people have lots and lots of money. And money and monetary stuff is the only way in which you can measure anybody's success. We never measure success in terms of how happy a person actually is. Is that person satisfied with their life? Maybe there's a person who lives very modestly, doesn't have a lot of money, but they're very happy. We don't see that person as successful. Why? Because he, he lives in a very simple apartment, has a very simple job, isn't famous, isn't well known. But that person, every day of life, they just enjoy life tremendously. Another person, they could be totally depressed and everything, but if they got brand new houses, cars, trucks, they're famous, they're well known, that everybody wants their autograph, that person we see as happy. We don't pay attention to what they feel. We pay attention to what they have. It's just, you know, something to think about. It's just a thought on my mind about these things.